Hey everyone, welcome to Game Jammin'. Today we are going to be doing a closer look at the winning stats. Specifically, we're focusing on Mercy and Symmetra. Now, I already did a video on supports before, but I want to look again back at the stats and try to look at some graphs and see if we can get some more information out of the data I pulled. Now, as a reminder for people who haven't uh, seen these videos before, the video is going to be talking a lot about correlations. Correlation is just a way of showing the relationship and the direction of the relationship between two variables. If it's closer to one, it's a positive relationship. If it's closer to negative one, it's a negative relationship. And if it's close to zero, there's less, there's no relationship at all. The correlations that we're going to specifically look at are ones for SR and the correlations for win rate. Basically, we're trying to find the stats that optimize both of them together, and that's our max result. One more note, the SR correlation doesn't have anything to do with how many points a player gains or loses. It simply has to do with a stat that goes up or down based on being at a higher ranking. For example, at bronze, the average soldier may get 0.5 kills per minute, while at diamond, it may get one kill per minute. That's what I'm talking about. So the max stats are going to be the clues that we use in order to do deeper dives into the data. Basically, we're going to be looking for important stats that seem to either have really big positive or negative correlations, or maybe even no correlation at all, and go investigate them. And another big thing to note is correlation does not equal causation. So that's where we're going to say the correlation is just going to be a clue for us, but we need to do uh, more investigation into the data, and that's exactly what this video is all about. So let's start with Mercy. So let's dive right in here. So you're going to notice there's going to be three sections, one for platinum and below, one for diamond and above, and then one for the total. And what I'm specifically focusing here on is the max line, although we're going to note some of the differences between the SR correlations versus the win rate correlations. You'll also notice the highlighting. Any of the blue boxes are the top three correlations, and any of the red boxes are the bottom three correlations in that row. So we're very quickly, we should be able to find the blue boxes in the max line to see what is the interesting stats. And you'll notice here, um, as stated before, time spent on fire, player resurrections, and defensive assists are popping up in the platinum category. So what's the difference when you look at the diamond category? You'll notice that it switches over from defensive assist to offensive assist for SR, but we still keep that time spent on fire and player resurrections. So let's go into the data further and let's pull up some graphs and we'll get to see what the correlations mean in an actual scatter plot. So first up, we got SRs versus res. The top graph shows you the SR, while the bottom shows you the win rate versus res. And specifically, that one's focused on diamond and up players. What you're going to note here is at the very top, the one that had a high correlation, you can see a clear change from lower ranks to upper ranks, where at the lower ranks, you have an average of 0.5 reses per, per minute. At the upper ranks, you're getting to 0.75, almost 0.8 per minute. Now let's compare that to the bottom graph where you see uh, practically a straight line when you're comparing the win rates versus the res. So it doesn't seem to have that much of a correlation at all and that lines up with the data I was showing earlier. Now even though this data was for diamond and above, if we were even to include all the data, the correlation would still be very low and not that significant. So let's take a look at another stat, offensive assists. I was really curious about this data because it seemed to be really important at the diamond level and above, but it seemed to have no effect on the win rate. So let's take a look at the graphs, and if you see here, when you're looking at 3,000 3, SR up to 4,500, there's a pretty sharp ramp up in the, in the curve there. Now there is a wide range, but we're talking about a difference of 0.5 up to 1.2, 1.3, I mean that's pretty darn impressive. However, if you compare that to the win win rate versus offensive assists, you see a scatter plot that I don't even bother to put a line on. It's just there's no correlation there, and and that's exactly why it's really hard to use the win rate. And I've been depending on the SR statistic. 
The next graph we got here is for healing, the most basic thing that you expect Mercy to be doing a lot of. And if we look at the top graph of SR versus healing, you'll notice that the number is going up, but it's only going up kind of slightly between ranks. So we have the base kind of toward 900 and up toward the top, uh, almost a thousand. So you're not seeing too much change. There's definitely a correlation, definitely the healing's going up, but it's just not that strong a correlation. If we take a look at the win rate and focusing on diamond and above, you'll again see the number is going up, starting at the low end of about 90, uh, 900 for the about 40% range, and then up to about 1,000 again at the 60% range. So definitely healing is, is worthwhile and it's important, but just the correlation isn't as strong, which would, would suggest that Mercy just doesn't have as large of a skill ceiling as possibly the other heroes. So the last point I want to make on Mercy is on SR gains and losses. Now, the previous data didn't really track the SR gains and losses. However, what I decided to do was to track the same 200 players again after a, after a week to see what we could find out. Now, I had to whittle down the data because I needed to find players that had spent time playing this week, at least a significant amount of time, and two were Mercy mains or at least played 75% of the time on Mercy. That way we could know that the SR was based on their performance on Mercy. And the results uh, actually look really good. Uh, basically, the SR average per win seems to be settled at around 22, which is maybe a little higher of what I expected, which 20 being my baseline. Uh, but it doesn't seem too bad at all. It, it, I mean, it is a little bit higher, but I wouldn't be too alarmed about it. Uh, and it does line up with the data found in Overwatch Central, which uh, is good news because that means that our data sets are actually lining up with each other and not showing uh, different results. So now let's move on to Symmetra. Last time I did a discussion on Symmetra, I was actually a little bit upset at what the data results pulled. Uh, but this is where I think I need to investigate it further. And now that we have a breakdown between Platinum and Below players and Diamond and Above, we can see some differences that may be worth investigating. I'm going to take a look at the few of the stats that look most interesting to me, and we'll put it over in our scatter plots and see what happens. So let's take a look first at SR versus damage. Oh my goodness, does this shed a light on things. So the problem I had with the data before is if you drew a straight line here, the straight line would not really explain the data very well. If we however use this polynomial, polynomial just means a curved line, but if we use this curved line, we can see that at about the 2500 range is right where the damage peaks and then slowly it start, the damage starts to go down as you get to higher levels. This may be due to players having more difficulty using Symmetra at higher levels. However, if you look at the same uh, data, but when we're looking at win rate versus damage, you'll notice that the more damage you're able to do, it seems to have a very good positive correlation to getting a higher win rate. And look at how high those win rates are. We're talking about the low numbers being closer to 50 and the higher numbers being closer to the 60 to 70 and even a little bit in the 80% range. This goes to show that the correlation value, although can be relevant, sometimes doesn't explain all the data that we're looking at. So using the curves, let's take a look at some other plots that are interesting for Symmetra. If we take a look at the eliminations data, we'll also notice something that wasn't captured very well by the correlation value, but maybe is better seen in the scatter plots. If you look here at the eliminations, as you get to higher ranks, you'll notice that it's slowly dipping off where you get to the higher ends and simply it's more difficult to get eliminations. Now, if we look at the win rate versus eliminations, you'll notice that it's still a very good correlation with uh, eliminations that you get a much higher win rate when you get to higher limbs. And you'll also notice there's a pretty big difference between the low end and the high end, where the low end is maybe 1.6 eliminations, and the high end is over two, maybe 2.1, 2.2. Um, I think it's really interesting to note that the bigger gaps provide uh, more opportunity for skill to be involved, uh, but it's kind of a weird relationship that at higher SRs, eliminations are going down. So if you're trying to track Symmetra performance, how are you going to be able to tell whether a player is performing good or bad if eliminations are no longer a factor? 
So finally, let's take a look at objective kills. You'll notice it's not all that different from eliminations except for maybe the scale. It's definitely lower than eliminations, of course. Uh, but you'll notice again we have that same uh, pattern where we're seeing a drop off as you get to higher SR levels. Even though it's very important to the win rate. You can see down below again, the more objective kills you get, the better it is. Uh, and the relationship is fairly clear, although there is some uh, room for the distribution there. Uh, so here's my point to this, is when you're looking at this data and you are trying to figure out what defines a good Symmetra player, it appears that the current stats that we have available don't do a great job of describing a Symmetra player. There's clearly something they're doing right because they're winning games, but I can't find a great stat that shows, without a doubt, uh, a stat that is important for Symmetras in order to win. Uh, it, clearly, it helps to have objective kills, but it goes down a higher SR ranking. So once again, how do you measure it for gains? And I think that may be where Blizzard is tripping up. So I did the same exercise again, this time with the Symmetra players. Now, unfortunately, the player pool is pretty small. Uh, I was looking again for Symmetra mains in order to get rid of any uh, players that are playing bad with one hero and good with another. Uh, whittled it down to 13 players. However, with those 13 players, you're seeing an average SR gain of 17. Now, if you compare that to about the 21 of the Mercy, it looks pretty bad. Uh, but honestly, I'm a little bit confused about how they are going to rank these players. Again, we were looking at eliminations uh, by rank or by SR, and it was going down. So you can't judge on eliminations. You can't really judge on objective kills. So kind of what stats are left. Now, there's potential here that there is a stat that I'm missing that is actually being reported by Blizzard, or potentially there are hidden stats that uh, simply we do not have access to yet. Um, but as of right now, I simply don't see a great stat for measuring performance at higher levels. Uh, if anyone has any ideas or tips, let me know so I can go take a look. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to say I'm stumped, and maybe that's why Blizzard is having a difficulty giving SR to uh, the Symmetra players. Now, last time we were looking at this data as well, for the entire pool, it seemed that there were less Symmetra players in the higher ranks, especially in Master and Grandmaster. Um, but maybe it's due to this as opposed to before I was complaining that the SR gains are unfair. It just may be that it's difficult to track. So now it's time for the wrap up. Uh, that's it for the data. What I'm gonna try to do is in the description below, I'm gonna put links for where you can find pics of the graphs, uh, pics of the data set that I'm looking at. I'm not releasing the full Excel sheet yet, but I will at least give you any of the data that you saw in this page. Um, if there's anything missing, please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to get that data out to you guys. Um, but I'm not intending to release this data until I can finish doing an analysis on the rest of the heroes, including the offense heroes and the defense heroes, which I think will be the, probably the most interesting. Uh, let me know your feedback in the comments below. This is, every time you guys are giving me feedback, is super, super helpful. Uh, and I'm hoping that I can continue to refine this research for you guys. Um, also, a special shout out to Overwatch Central, uh, who took the time to take a look at this data and share it with their members. Uh, we are happy to have you here and look forward to showing you more interesting data. That's it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.